Sponsored by Surfshark. It is, for better or worse, that time of year. To take in the holiday decorations, to celebrate the milestones of the past 300 some odd days, to share a good meal, a few drinks, and a round of pool with friends new and old. In other words, it's time to be present, to stay in the moment instead of in your messages, to feed your soul instead of scrolling the feed. And if you don't have the will to do that yourself, Motorola has just the phone for you, with an app to help you unplug, a design to help you shut down, and a camera, well, a camera so bad you'll almost never want to use it. It was back in the summer that I showed you the Razer Plus, Motorola's higher-end flip phone that was all about doing more, especially on the cover screen. Well, the non-plussed Razer, or as I like to call it, the Razer Minus, inverts that philosophy by limiting you to a tiny 1.5-inch OLED on the cover, the idea being that closing the phone opens you up to the outside world so you can experience the joy of missing out. It is also, of course, an idea driven by marketers to turn a technical weakness into a strength through sophistry. But hey, when the end product is a folding phone that costs half as much as the fancier flips, well, I'm willing to be more forgiving about the strategies used to sell it. Originally priced at an already low $699 when it launched in October, the Razer is already even cheaper, with a holiday price cut to $499, and some carrier deals put it far lower even than that. Now, despite those discounts, the Razer inherits a lot of DNA from its upscale sibling. The aluminum chassis and hinge, most of the inner display specs, the overall size and shape. And with all the interior space freed up by the lack of a giant cover display, Motorola was able to squeeze in a 10% larger battery that lasts me a full day, while keeping the same wired and wireless charging speeds. There's even Ready4, and it's more sensibly named Motorola Connect Companion, so you can, yeah, wirelessly project the phone's interface to a TV or PC, or even a screen and keyboard dock for a quick and dirty laptop replacement. I don't recommend this because it's incredibly laggy when wireless, but it's wild that it's even possible on a foldable this affordable. You know my favorite thing about the Razer? It feels like the first truly durable folding phone. Vegan leather is basically fancy talk for stamped rubber, so when it's closed, the Razer feels armored against pretty much anything that could befall it. To me, it strongly recalls an old West Clock's folding alarm clock that I had as a kid. Except with an IP52 dust and water resistance rating, the Razer can probably take more abuse. There are third-party cases available, but honestly, this phone feels like its own case. The only thing I'd worry about is dropping it while open, which I did from waist height with my Razer Plus review unit, which promptly destroyed the inner display. So that extended protection plan Motorola offers, yeah, it might be a good idea to add the most expensive one of those, especially since you'll still be paying way less than MSRP if you get it on sale. On paper, that's a pretty positive ratio of ups to downs and a fairly compelling gateway drug to the world of clamshells. Essentially, it's what I hoped the Techno Phantom Flip would be if it ever came to the States. But like the old saying goes, you don't trim a Christmas tree without breaking a few ornaments. And in day-to-day -day usage, well, the, the Razor's compromises don't take long to rise to the surface. Now, I'm not going to dwell on the limitations of the outer screen. Nearly four years of flip foldables have taught us that the smaller a cover screen is, the less you'll want to do on it. So I'm content with the few lines of text the Razor affords for messages, the small handful of widgets, the creative wallpapers from moon phase to moo face. Honestly, I'm surprised Motorola offers as many system toggles as it does. I didn't expect to be able to turn on the mobile hotspot from the cover display, but I can. Not even Samsung's giant Flip 5 cover display allows this. Weird. No, it's the Razer's overall performance that could use some sharpening. The Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 at the heart of the Razer is 18 months old, and I assume that's why the phone feels so much choppier than its more expensive cousin. 
It's certainly usable, but transitions stutter, apps take a few seconds more than you'd like to spin up, and even things like animated live loop wallpapers visibly chug. Or maybe it's not the silicon so much as the software. It's possible Motorola just hasn't devoted the resources to optimizing its particular flavor of Android 13 for this hardware, and I will note that I did receive a software update late in the review process that sped things up a bit. But voice calls were a surprising letdown. After having so much fun with the new noise cancellation features on iPhones, Pixels, even the OnePlus Open this year, I was shocked to hear my mother tell me on a call that there was too much New York City background noise for her to understand me. Yes, even with Crystal Talk noise reduction turned on. And the lowest point of the Razer is unquestionably its dual cameras. Most phones suffer after sundown, but use the Razer in anything but the most ideal lighting, and every capture will take an eternity. Moving subjects are completely blurry to an almost comical degree. You can't even spam the shutter button to try getting a good snap by dumb luck because the phone takes ages to recover after each shot. It can't reliably get or keep focus in photo or video. Video is abysmal, not even meeting the low bar of the Razer Plus with inconsistent frame rates, heavy clipping on the highlights, wild exposure swings, and a true snowstorm of noise in, again, anything but perfect lighting. And while it's nice to use the cover display to frame my shot when the phone is closed, it's annoying that I can't do that when it's open. Now sure, if you can hold still and you're not shooting any spur of the moment stuff that includes, you know, humans doing things, yeah, any phone camera will be fine. But it's clear to me that Motorola took a look at where it needed to cut corners to hit the price it wanted, and the camera took the brunt of that cost cutting. Fortunately, there is a substantially better camera, for stills at least, on a fundamentally better phone with the same name. And that one too is selling for far less than its launch price. At press time, the Motorola Razr Plus is $699, a wild 30% price cut from its MSRP and, incidentally, that of Samsung's Galaxy Flip 5 as well. With its glass face, it's definitely more fragile than the Razr Minus, but it's also much more useful. Plus, you can now get it in two Pantone colors of the year, 2023's Viva Magenta and 2024's Peach Fuzz. <laughs> Peach Fuzz. Uh, man, that's funny. Despite its flaws, I'm very happy the Razer Minus exists. It was a short two years ago that Samsung first brought the price of the flip phone below a thousand bucks. And in the same year, TCL canceled the phone codenamed Chicago that would have tried to get flip phones below the $800 mark. Well, here we are, about to kick off 2024 with a US foldable at a buck under 500. The novelty, the nostalgia, the fun that a flip phone brings shouldn't be a privilege confined to the super rich, and Motorola deserves credit for almost certainly taking losses in the quest to drive volume at those mid-tier price points. The next challenge will be reducing the number of compromises the price conscious have to put up with, and with rumors pointing to a potential mid-range foldable from Samsung in the new year, it might not be long before the Razer has competition in a whole new segment. Until then, I will just use the excuse of its bad cameras and tiny cover screen to try to stay present for the holidays instead of scrolling them away like so much flotsam on the never-ending feed. If you're tired of hearing about Surfshark, I get it. After all, the company has been my sponsor for four years. But if you think about it, that's a good thing. It means Surfshark has done its job of keeping me and its customers safe while browsing the web all over the world. You also might have noticed that I haven't taken a sponsorship from any other VPN company since I started. And that's not because I can't. It's because I haven't felt the need to use anyone but Surfshark. In addition to securing my connection on Wi-Fi networks all around the world, it also guarantees I can still access media and services that might otherwise be restricted by the country I'm browsing from. If that sounds useful to you, get Surfshark at the link in the description and use code MrMobile for 83% off and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video.
This video was produced following several weeks with a Razer review sample provided by Motorola, which incidentally also took Mr. Mobile and a number of other media out to a New York City holiday dinner in advance of the Pantone Peach Fuzz Razer Plus announcement. But as you can probably tell, that had no bearing on the opinions purveyed in this piece, and I never allow any review subject, copy approval, or editorial input into my reviews, nor did I receive any monetary compensation in exchange for this video. Hey, check out my Razer Plus versus Flip 5 comparison if you're cross-shopping clamshells this holiday season, and stay tuned for one more Mr. Mobile video before the year is out. Until next time, from a still recovering from sickness, Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.